Abraham Earl Walker in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I am Adilola Adilu from Ibadan, Nigeria. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your family background and uh, how you came to go into medicine. Were there members of your family in the medical profession? I was born in uh, Ikole Ikiti in Nigeria in uh, 1935. Um, my parents uh, came originally from Ikiti district, but they now live at uh, Elisha. Uh, they are not uh, in medicine. Uh, my father is a motor mechanic uh, and my mother a housewife. And uh, I went into medicine uh, by chance. And uh, during your uh, school years, were you particularly interested in the uh, medical field? In a uh, secondary school, we did every subject, uh, math from mathematics uh, to music and uh, geography and uh, the arts. Uh, and it was uh, at the end of our uh, education in the secondary school that they interested some of us uh, in the sciences. But we did not do uh, much science at the secondary school level. The, uh, I did uh, uh, more of my science after leaving school. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, your medical education? Uh, we were the first set of uh, Nigerians who trained fully in medicine uh, in Nigeria uh, under the auspices uh, of uh, the special relationship with London University. Um, I did my MBBS of London University in 1960, uh, and after that I went to the United Kingdom to uh, do postgraduate studies. And uh, uh, where did you get your neurosurgical training? Well, uh, in England, uh, where I did uh, medicine for some time, and uh, that led me to the membership of the Royal College of uh, Physicians of Edinburgh in 1965, the fellowship uh, of the college, Royal College of uh, Surgeons of England, uh, was done in 1960, and then uh, after that, I decided to specialize in a, a neurosurgery. Um, I did my first job under Mr. Eric Newton uh, of uh, Stroke on Trent. Uh, well, my head injury, I had to go to Oxford to work under Mr. John Porter. Uh, he was uh, the other neurosurgeon with uh, uh, the late Joe Pennybacker in Oxford at the time. When I finished that, uh, I came to London and studied uh, and uh, was a registrar to uh, Professor Valentine Logue at the uh, uh, National Hospital for Nervous Diseases. Uh, Mr. Lindsay Simon was his uh, lecturer at the time. Uh, he today is uh, the professor and the uh, uh, president of the World Federation of uh, Neurosurgical Society. Well, that must have been a very exciting experience uh, in London. Yes. Uh, you met a number of uh, notable neurologists as well as neurosurgeons. Could you tell us something about them? Well, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Uh, Valentine Lug, uh, who was who became professor then, uh, was an exceptionally good uh, technician. Uh, uh, very private man, professionally and uh, otherwise, uh, did not talk much about himself. But to work with him was a real pleasure and a real privilege and opportunity because he was a superb technician. His uh, hemostasis was meticulous. His care of patients was uh, uh, of a superior order. And uh, indeed, whenever I was consulted by his uh, neuro neurological colleagues, he made sure that he examined the patient thoroughly and would pick up some that uh, some of them had missed. And uh, I remember they used to make little jokes about him. But whenever any of them was ill, whom did they ask for? Was uh, uh, Professor Valentine Lowe because of his... Uh, did any of the neurologists uh, make a particular impression upon you? Yes, uh, I remember uh, 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 
Professor McDonald Critchley, uh, of course, we've all heard about him at the time. And on Wednesdays, they used to have a meeting of, uh, a neurological meeting of a demonstration of cases at the Queen Square then. And each of the neurologists used to come. Of course, all of them they are, had, uh, were very famous and uh, we knew of them. And I remember uh, Michael Kramer he would come and then demonstrate physical science of uh, the brainstem. Uh, at the time, the specificity of uh, clinical examination was very important because we didn't have CT scan and geography was uh, uh, the most important thing. Um, and I remember uh, Dr. Dennis Williams, who was editor of Brain at the time, and uh, with his special expertise on, uh, on, um, on epilepsy. Um, there were all other, uh, Dr. Gil uh, Professor Gilead, who was uh, uh, very interested in peripheral uh, uh, neuropathies. This, uh, there were other uh, neurologists, but these are the ones that... Uh, yes, well, those must have been very exciting times. Yes. Well, then you came back to Abaddon from there. Yes. And uh, was neurosurgery being done there at that time? Yes. Uh, when I, as a student, we did not... Uh, neurosurgery was not practiced uh, in Abaddon. And uh, I must say this, um, we did not even have uh, lectures in uh, neurosurgery. And uh, when, uh, I, when I qualified... Uh, um, I, I didn't know much about, I didn't know anything about neurosurgery, but uh, uh, I wanted to do something where you could use your medical and your surgical skill. Uh, and I remember they said, oh, well, the best thing to do was to do uh, obstetrics and gynecology. But uh, I, I did a job, the first job in it for four months, and I lost interest in it because uh, I thought I'd known everything about it, and then uh, I decided that uh, it could be neurosurgery. And uh, as a digression, I remember when I was doing my first job in Bath, uh, in England, I came across the obituary notice on uh, the late Jeffrey Jefferson of Manchester. I read this in the British Medical Journal. I never met him, but it was such an impressive uh, account of his uh, life history, uh, his practices, uh, 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 neurosurgery, he took neurosurgery to the north of England, that I decided that this is it, that this is what uh, I was going to do. I remember making a, uh, a copy of his, uh, of his uh, photograph in the BMJ and uh, kept it with me as, as a sort of stimulus. Um, so when I finished in a, when I finished by uh, Professor Valentine, look, I did not actually finish with him, but he wanted me de to do some, I was going to do some research with uh, Mr. Lindsay Simon, who was very interested in uh, cerebrovascular uh, disorders at the time. But then the Nigerian Civil War broke out in 1967, and um, they, uh, they told me that uh, uh, my services would be required uh, at home. So I went home, uh, I was then a, a senior uh, registrar, went home to Ibadan, where I trained, and uh, by then, uh, late uh, Latin Dek we had set up neurosurgery in Ibadan, and uh, I, I worked with him directly from 1967. Uh, he, he was uh, he's been running a very a good unit. Uh, he trained in America, um, quite an exceptionally good man, and uh, I was very happy to work with him. And then he became dean, and then I had to do most of the work after that. Well, now, uh, in Abaddon, the uh, cases that you saw, were, were they the same as you had seen in London, or were they uh, different? Uh, uh, in the, uh, broadly speaking, uh, we, saw, we saw everything uh, at Ibadan. Uh, the first difference I noticed when I got home from my experiences in uh, Queen Square was in Queen Square we saw cold cases. Uh, as I told you, I had to go to Oxford. Uh, I went to Oxford to do my head injuries. Mm -hmm. We did not see head injuries uh, in, uh, at the National Hospital. Uh, congenital malformations, uh, hydrocephalus and myelomeningosis were treated at the hospital behind us uh, at uh, the Great Ormond Street. But in Ibadan, everything came to, the, to our unit. It was the only unit in Nigeria then. They, then we had a population of about 40, 50 million. So we saw everything, trauma, tumors, uh, inflammatory diseases, congenital malformations, everything came to Ibadan at the time. Well now, were the uh, uh, specific neurological disorders, the various tumors of the brain that you saw, the same as you had seen in uh, England, or did they uh, differ a bit? 
broadly speaking, they were uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, quality. I would say yes, uh, we saw gliomas, we saw meningiomas, but one disease that we didn't see was the acoustic neuroma. We did not see any acoustic neuroma, and uh, Professor Deku who was there for four years before me, never saw any, and uh, it wasn't an experience that was peculiar to a bad man. Uh, uh, Professor Lawrence Levy in uh, East Africa, in, uh, in Rhodesia at the time, uh, also reported the reality of that. But what we saw were these huge meningiomas. They came very late, they came when they were very advanced, and we, you did not need too much of any of uh, investigation to make a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. The patient will have had all the maybe neurological deficits. Plain skull x-ray will, will have shown at times calcification, uh, and we had facility for angiography which we show uh, the lesion. The gliomas, we did not see uh, the glioblastoma multiforming. Uh, um, we thought that many of these patients would probably have died because uh, they had no facilities to neurosurgery. If it was a malignant glioma, it would have killed them. Whereas the meningioma, they didn't kill them, so they came to hospital. The same thing with uh, pituitary tumors. Mm -hmm. We saw them, they were very advanced, they were very big, Patients would come when they come totally blind, but then we had to uh, uh, do something. Um, pain pro I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, pain problems are uh, not not very. Uh, we didn't see much of pain problems. Uh, involuntary movements to not much. The pain, one type of pain, a few pain problems we operated on were young, like young Africans, young Nigerians who had carcinoma of the blood power with intractable pain. We, we, one or two cases we had to do a, a cordotomy for, uh, for them to relieve the pain. But facial pain and the type of pain that is in the, we saw in Europe uh, were very rare. Now, did you see many uh, tumors of children or, or of infancy or congenital tumors, for example? Were they common? They were common in the sense that 60% of uh, the hospital population were, were children. They were children under the age of 15. So we saw uh, a lot of tumors in, uh, in children. Um, the, uh, as I said, the pituitary tumors, uh, well, tumor in a broad sense, that is even non-neoplastic uh, diseases like uh, uh, tuberculoma. We used to see some tuberculoma in the early days in Ibadan. Uh, in fact, up till 1968, we saw them uh, fairly often, but after that, we, we, we didn't see any. In fact, after 1968, the only, the next time we operated, or I operated on the tuberculoma, was 1978, that is a gap of 10 years. We didn't see them again. Um, but uh, uh, the children, they presented with just all the type of tumors that uh, children uh, elsewhere uh, will have, except that they came uh, very late and very big. And uh, what about inflammatory diseases? Were they uh, very common? Um, abscesses uh, we saw, but when I was coming, I remember when I was coming home, uh, people told me that, oh, going home, going to Africa, probably most of the lesions I'll be dealing with will be inflammatory. But uh, I, that was not my experience. Brain abscesses, for instance, were not so common. Uh, the cases we saw followed uh, cases of uh, 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 badly treated or incompletely treated uh, uh, depressed uh, skull fractures or cases where foreign bodies have been left uh, inside the head. Uh, uh, chronic suppurative otitis media, yes, we saw a few, but the intracranial complications were not so common. They were, in general, the inflammatory diseases were not uh, so common in our practice. Well, that's, that's interesting because in many places, inflammatory diseases were, were very common, but uh, not so here. Not, 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 not so common. And what about so trauma? Common. Did you have a lot of uh, trauma, subdural hematomas? Yes. Uh, trauma was the first uh, uh, lesion, of course, the, the, the first neurosurgical problem that confronted me uh, personally because I told you, I went home when the Nigerian Civil War started and uh, we had to go to the war front to deal with the uh, uh, wounded soldiers. But uh, there were two of us, uh, myself and the late Professor Odeku. 
he became dean and administrator of the medical school, so he had to be in Baden. And I went to the front, but I was useless there because I mean I could I would just see the cases, I couldn't do anything. So we had to evacuate them to the Baden. It became the center uh, uh, for treating uh, missile wounds of the head. And we had a lot of experience dealing with missile wounds of the head. Uh, we operated on at least 500 of them. Um, and uh, I was fortunate, he, he guided me uh, initially because I'd never seen any before. Uh, and uh, I became very conversant with this uh, that uh, I wrote uh, uh, a master, master of surgery thesis for University of London on missile wounds of the head in Nigerian soldiers. Um, so, so that gave me a, a, a lot of practice immediately and quickly. So within six months and a year, I was quite conversant with uh, managing those injuries. But in between, of course, we dealt with the uh, civilian injuries, we dealt with the uh, tumors of the brain, we dealt with the tuberculomas, we dealt with uh, the congenital malformations uh, 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 in children. Well, <laughs> in England, I'm sure that you saw a lot of pain cases. Um, what about that over here? Were there many, say, kicked all or? Uh, the Other only, pains, uh, yeah, tick, uh, tick, the only mm, three, four cases I remember seeing uh, were in uh, foreigners, uh, two Indians, and uh, there was uh, an elderly lady in Nigeria who had it, but generally it is rare in our practice there. We don't... Uh, so you, you, uh, you didn't do many chordotomies? No, we, we didn't. Uh, and, um, we, the one case of uh, trigeminal uh, one of the cases we had to do a local injection uh, for, but otherwise we treated uh, uh, them with Tegritol. So my experience or our experience of pain as a problem so com in comparison with Europe is uh, that it is uh, very rare in, uh, uh, in oh, Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. Well now, were there uh, uh, types of cases that you saw here that uh, were quite different from those in England? The, we, uh, with, um, in a, with our malformations, uh, we tend to, we saw more uh, encephalosis, I think, than uh, uh, they saw in England, that's number one. Uh, then we had this uh, experience with the midline sensibital damoid lesion, uh, the damoid cyst, um, which Professor uh, uh, Deku reported way back in uh, 65, uh, and uh, in, uh, four or five years later, then we put together all our experiences. And uh, we think it, we thought it was uh, a very unique disease. Uh, um, and Gilea, uh, um, uh, if it's a Gilea cyst of the uh, anterior fontanel, um, cases have then been later were dis uh, described from uh, uh, Zimbabwe here. Four, four years after us, and we thought uh, maybe this is really a unique, pecu peculiar thing. Uh, and uh, Dr. Blosser and uh, uh, Levy, who described this, when uh, Blosser went back to America, he, he saw some too, but uh, um, Negro children, and uh, we thought that they were peculiar to African children, but we now know better that no, uh, it's seen all over the world. But it's a very simple benign lesion, but it's just, uh, it's peculiar, it's unusual. It doesn't kill them. They have no neurological deficit. They have no uh, other uh, anomaly. But it's just there and it's unique. That's what something that is striking. The other striking thing was when we were looking into metastatic tumors in the body. I remember that uh, uh, our first publication highlighted the relative um, uh, frequency uh, of uh, malignant trophoblastic uh, disease as a source of metastasis to the brain in uh, uh, Nigerian women. Um, we, we, we couldn't explain it. We thought uh, there was uh, some interest in malignant trophoblastic disease in the Baden at the time. And we thought that maybe because of the catchment area there, uh, uh, this probably increased. The well, now, were you uh, uh, more successful in the treatment of these malignancies, the metastatic lesions, and so forth? 
here than we are in the United States or England? We have with this uh, particular entity, I wish I mentioned methotrexate, and uh, if we could control the, we could attack the disease at, at source, uh, malignant retroplastic uh, uh, with uh, methotrexate, then we had some relative uh, success, uh, and they gave uh, injections uh, intra uh, uh, by the intrathecal route, and this really helped uh, the patients. But it's very difficult, you see, because once they have the metastasis to the brain, the, the, the prognosis becomes very, very poor, and uh, they, they present at times like strokes. And uh, when, so when we see a young woman in a childbearing period of life having stroke, that you cannot explain. They'll be normotensive, they will have no diabetes. We must think of uh, malignant uh, trophoblastic uh, disease as the source of the uh, second. Well, now, when you came over here, uh, did you have the uh, diagnostic uh, facilities that you have been accustomed to in London? Yes, uh, because uh, at least up till uh, before CT scan, I will say that uh, we had almost practically all the facilities for investigation that I was used to. Um, what was more, uh, when I was at Queen Square, uh, the late uh, Dr. Bull, who was uh, the uh, neuroradiologist, they did all their angiography. But when we went, when I went back home, we had to do our own angiography by the need, uh, by puncture, direct puncture of the, uh, of the, uh, of the carotid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would uh, do plain x-ray, we could do uh, air studies, we could do uh, myelography. We used uh, myodine, uh, I must say, uh, initially mm -hmm. then. Uh, we could do uh, ventriculography using air, or, uh, again, contrast. And uh, we would do our uh, own study, our own uh, geography, we would find the tumor and then operate the, uh, the following day. So it was, uh, we were well equipped in terms of uh, facilities to do uh, research. But you had to do it yourself. We had, yes. There we no had neuroradiologist. To well, we had a good care. radiologist, but uh, they were general radiologists. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, but I remember uh, Dr. Cockshaw, he's now in uh, Canada who was in charge of radiology, he gave us all the uh, facilities to work. But we liked to do our own angiography because there were cases where they would do the angiography, the patient would deteriorate, we would never know about this until the following day mm -hmm. or late at night. So we like to control this. So we did the angiography uh, either the day we were operating, the morning of the day of operation, or at least shortly before our proper operating session so that we could cope with any complications that could come after angiography. Well, now, did you have any other diagnostic procedures? Were electroencephalography available to you? Yes, we, 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 yes. we, we, had, uh, we had EEG, uh, and indeed we were fortunate because uh, at the time Rockefeller donated a department of psychiatry, uh, uh, neurology, and neurosurgery, and uh, they funded it we had person, not only personnel but uh, equipment. We had a very good uh, EEG uh, machine and the uh, technician. We had uh, the neurologist who had uh, all the facilities uh, for research and for uh, patient care. Well, uh, you say you had a department of uh, neurology and neurosurgery. Uh, now, did the cases come in directly to you or to the neurologist? The cases came directly to us as soon. Professor Deku uh, quickly established uh, the unit. Uh, initially, uh, we were part of that composite unit of psychiatry, neurology, and uh, neurosurgery. But later, we pulled out of it and went into surgery because we, we were more at home uh, in the, uh, surgical, uh, the, the large surgical department. Uh, but the neurosurgical cases came directly to us because uh, we had uh, unit, we had uh, beds, we had uh, our own uh, uh, theater for uh, uh, doing the uh, operations. So it, uh, uh, they knew about us, so the patients came to us too. But there are cases where the neurologists will see them first and then uh, we'll be consulted. Or even the uh, psychiatrists will see them first and we will be called into a consultation. Now, uh, did you uh, notice any difference in the type of case that you got here? than those you saw in London? Well, uh, as I said, uh, the, 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 the presentation, our uh, cases tend to come very late. 
Whereas uh, in the United Kingdom, the cases came very early. They are picked up very early because uh, um, of uh, the uh, medical care there, which is different from what we have uh, at home in Nigeria. Uh, what about the treatment of pain? Was that uh, required as much in Abaddon as it had been in London? No, um, as I said, no, no, not really. Uh, the few cases we, um, we operated on uh, uh, were these late cases of uh, colonic cancer with uh, intractable pain. Uh, but pain problem as such was not really one of our uh, problems. Well, uh, tell me something about the uh, attitude of the medical profession in general towards neurosurgery. How, how were you received? In, in the medical school, was neurosurgery uh, looked upon as a, a highly desirable specialty? Um, when uh, uh, my senior colleague, Professor Defi, came, of course, he was received with a bit of a doubt that, that uh, the, way, but the question was asked whether uh, we needed a, a neurosurgery. It was thought to be expensive. It was thought that uh, the cases were not even there because uh, um, they thought it would not even have enough to do. And so we had opposition or we had uh, uh, some resistance, not only from our colleagues, uh, of course, but even from the generality of, yeah. the, uh, of the people. Um, uh, in fact, I remember the, uh, the, the head of surgery at the time was doubting whether he would be able to sustain uh, a unit of neurosurgery because uh, he would not have enough cases. But very soon, uh, uh, this was uh, disproved and uh, we knew that we were going to have many, many cases. Then uh, the people, of course, uh, feared that uh, 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 surgeons were going to operate on their heads. How are they going to approach these lesions? What would be the result? But when they started to see the results of uh, uh, our treatment, the management, uh, and the, um, the outcome, then neurosurgery became, uh, was accepted. But that was initially. And uh, the problems of the discipline was not only in the initial stages, but even now, even that is established, now it has become, it's now looked on as a super specialty. You know, they, they're asking for uh, CT scan, we're asking for microscope, we're asking for uh, this and that and everything. And they think the expenses of neurosurgery was good, will mop up all the expenses of uh, the whole, uh, whole department. So that uh, now, the, so the difficulties of neurosurgery are not confined to establishing it as a, as a discipline. It continues, even when it becomes established, it's, it con the, the problems continue because it is looked on, upon as a super specialty. And very few people want to, have to, uh, want to go into it. it uh, it's expensive, the training is long. Uh, government thinks it's expensive. So the problems are still there. Well, now, what do you think the future will be for neurosurgery? Well, the future is, uh, 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 it's good in the sense that uh, now it is an established uh, discipline. People know that we need it. Uh, primary care will not deal with uh, the problems of a patient with meningioma. It's past primary health care. And uh, people know that we have the manpower, we have the equipment to be able to hand, to, to deal with it. So since it has become established, people will continue to ask for our services. The problem is how are we going to be sustaining the services? We need the manpower, we need the equipment. Uh, in terms of manpower, it means more neurosurgeons. We are training neurosurgeons locally, but there are very few. Uh, there are many Nigerians who are training who trained fully in neurosurgery and they are abroad and are not coming home. And that is a problem. Because if they come home to reinforce the manpower, then we will be uh, on very good ground. Then there's a question of uh, centers and of equipment. Uh, government must still realize that while we following, we are developing the primary health care, tertiary medicine too has to be developed. And one of them is uh, neurosurgery. Now, what do you think the solution is to the manpower problem? Manpower problem is just, well, number one, to continue to train more people. It takes a long time. Uh, we have 
postgraduate training programs locally now. Uh, there's a Nigerian uh, postgraduate training program. There's a West African College of Surgeons uh, training program. And uh, these two are uh, going on. And we have candidates who are uh, in training. And at the end of the training, there's promise that they will get uh, employed either in the university mostly or by government. That's number one. Number two is how do we encourage Nigerians trained abroad to come back home? If they can come back home, to reinforce their manpower. Well, now, why, why don't they want to come back home? There, there's, from what you say, plenty of work for them here. Yes. What, what is the factor that attracts them to London and New York, for example? Uh, I think it's economic. It's economic. Um, it's just uh, just a question of finance. I think it is economic, mostly economic. Uh, uh, number one and two, they think uh, that perhaps uh, these are young people trained on the modern technology of neurosurgery. They are used to CT scan and even the, all the modern uh, imaging techniques, which uh, they may not get in uh, uh, in Nigeria. So this is. Uh, one problem. The other, as I said, is, uh, is finance. Uh, how much are they going to be paid? Uh, how much are they going to make? And I think this is crucial if, uh, if they're going to survive. Well, now, are there any other aspects of uh, neurosurgery in this country that you'd like to discuss? That, uh, the what is, for example, what, what is the relation now of neurosurgery to neurology, to neuroradiology, and to the medical school? Uh, do, you, uh, do you have uh, neurosurgical courses that are given to the students? Yes. Or uh, what, what is the arrangement? This is a, that's a very good question. Um, our students, they, we give uh, undergraduate lectures. And uh, in fact, we, we published a little book, uh, lecture notes, to give them the uh, idea of what neurosurgery is, uh, uh, is about. Then, on the bigger issue of the relationship between the, the neurosciences, government uh, of Nigeria, in its wisdom, has designated areas of what they call centers of excellence. And Ibadan has been designated the center of excellence in uh, neurosciences that is neurosurgery, neurology, and the uh, uh, neuropsychiatry and the other related disciplines. And this is a good step, uh, step in the right, right direction for us, so that we are now uh, working on that very actively to have uh, uh, Ibadan uh, established as a, a center for neurosciences, not only for Nigeria, but even for West Africa. A lot of work and a lot of our pioneers have attained eminence in these areas. Lambo in uh, psychiatry, for instance, the late Odeku in uh, neuro, neurosurgery, uh, Kuyuge Washington in, in, uh, in neurology, and we've published a lot of, in fact, a lot of work has been done from Ibadan uh, uh, in various aspects of uh, neurosciences, and uh, we've written books uh, 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 in this area, so we are uh, quite happy. The thing to do now is to, for us just to maintain the uh, interest and the stimulus to make this uh, to make it a very very functional and enjoyable center of uh, uh, neurosciences, a center of excellence for neurosciences. Well, now another function of the neurosurgeon, particularly in the university, is the advancement of the specialty. What uh, facilities do you have for research? Yes, most of uh, 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 the basic. Uh, research that is what we do at the moment. Uh, by basic research, I mean trying to define patterns. What do we see? That was for that, that, for that of where we started. Um, and we've done a lot of clinical research in the sense that we will work out uh, trying to take very careful uh, uh, case history, trying to document everything well, and then trying to map out areas of uh, in neurosciences. So We've got facilities in the sense that we have lots of patients uh, coming, and uh, we have a good uh, medical illustration unit that uh, was helping us, uh, particularly in the early days. 
So uh, the thrust of our research on neurosurgery has been uh, uh, clinical. Uh, but now recently we are uh, getting more into uh, uh, research, trying to work out, uh, say, what is the basic pattern of uh, uh, Nigerian score? What is the uh, anatomy, the normal anatomy of the cellar? What uh, the the canal, the the, uh, the uh, spinal canal? What what is what is normal? That is normal anatomy like that. This this an another area where we are working. Uh, why is it that uh, we don't see uh, much of cervical spondylosis? Is it because we got adequate canal? That type of research is what we are doing. Uh, in terms of laboratory work, we've not uh, uh, done much in that area. Another type of research we are doing is on epidemiology. Uh, our colleagues in uh, medicine, they've done work on uh, epidemiology of uh, epilepsy or headache. We in the uh, department, we've done, uh, currently we are doing one on the epidemiology of congenital malformations. And we've taken spinal bifida cystica as a good example to study it in the community. We are moving now from the hospital into the community to mm -hmm. study the incidence of uh, uh, diseases. Well now, um, have you done much uh, writing uh, on uh, neurosurgery? Yes. Uh, publications? Yes. Uh, uh, do, could you tell us something uh, yes. of those? Um, there, there, I have some, uh, my latest work here in the neurosurgery, um, but uh, uh, we've written well over 200 paper, scientific papers on various aspects of uh, neurosurgery, trauma, tumors, infection, everything, because we see everything. Um, so uh, we've at least identified the pattern of diseases that we see in the body. Um, I've written a thesis myself on Mr. Heldon Jewis for the University of London in 1973. Uh, as to books in neurosurgery, uh, this, uh, we have at least six or seven of them. There's one, there was one on missile wounds of the head in Nigerian soldiers in 1978, uh, head injury in civil practice in 79, lecture notes for students, and neurological diseases in the African. And I was involved in WHO work on CNS plasticity and repair, which was, which produced a book uh, published by Raven Press of uh, America in uh, 1985. And this is the, this is my latest oh, book. Could, on, uh, could you let us see it, please? Yeah. Uh, neurosurgery, in, neurosurgery Africa. in Africa. Yes. And when when was this uh, published? Uh, 1989. That's the that's come. It came out. Published by the University Press in uh, uh, Nigeria. Yeah. And you cover pretty much all of neurosurgery. In yes. In this. It's, uh, it's uh, devoted to neurosurgery in Africa from Cairo to Cape Town and from Senegal to Somalia. We covered everything. Uh, based on the published works from Africa, mm -hmm. and, by, and by Africa, Africa as a geographical entity. Yes, it seems to be very comprehensive. Uh, 386 pages, yes. I know. Uh, yes. And, and how has this been received? Uh, uh, very, very well in received. Africa. Uh, very well received uh, by my colleagues, uh, and they're very, very happy. First, uh, it dealt with how neurosurgery started in Africa. Who are the pioneers? in Egypt, in Libya, in uh, uh, Zimbabwe, and, uh, and they were quite happy to see this. Um, and then it dealt with associations. In 1972, we formed the Pan-African Association of Neurological Sciences. And this has they've been holding meetings every two years, and it dealt with the activities. So they were quite happy, all the part, to see the part that they all know where neurosurgery started. So in terms of neuro, uh, we are no more, Africa is no more a dark continent. And then what I've done is to now take each uh, disease entity, head injury, my, my formations, tumors, infections, uh, cerebrovascular diseases, uh, and a lot. Everything that has been published on neurosurgery in Africa uh, is embodied in the book. So at least they'll be able to see uh, at least where we're coming from, uh, what we have on the ground. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you have a journal of neurosurgery or neurology? Uh, for uh, Africa? We do. There is the... Is it in French or English? Uh, it's, in, uh, it's, bi it's bilingual. It's English I and see. French. And it is called the African Journal of uh, Neurological Sciences. Uh, 
Oh yes, it's been on now for about seven, eight years. Uh, it's, it's coming out regularly, as regularly as Is it a monthly possible. journal or no, it comes, bi-monthly? It comes uh, first, we are publishing it, uh, we were putting out four issues a year, but uh, then we didn't have enough articles, then it reduced to uh, three times a year. Now we are publishing it twice a year. Uh, but it's been coming out regularly and uh, uh, steadily. And it is for, uh, it's, uh, English and French. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about uh, neurosurgery <laughs> in your country? Well, just that uh, um, we, the neurosurgical manpower is still the problem because there are vast areas where we, uh, in Africa where we don't have a, a neurosurgeon. But in Nigeria itself, we now have, uh, when I came, we, have, we had only one center. Now we have more centers uh, in the south and in the north of, uh, of the country. Um, students now know, uh, they are aware of uh, neurosurgery as a, an entity and as a discipline. And we get, we get applications from time to time from uh, students wanting to first to know about neurosurgery and secondly to ask if they uh, uh, could be taken on to, to train in, uh, in neurosurgery. So there's hope. Uh, it's an established discipline and it should continue to, uh, to grow. Well, we're very grateful to you for giving us this insight into neurosurgery in Africa. It will be of real value for the uh, neurosurgeons in America to learn something, and perhaps some uh, interchange of uh, personnel might benefit both countries. Thank you very much indeed.